Determine the empirical formulas for compounds with the following percent compositions. So the scheme to follow when we are trying to calculate an empirical formula is percent to gram to mole to divide by smallest number. You'll see what I mean by that. So this is always the scheme to follow when we're trying to solve for empirical formula. So let's start with phosphorus. 43.6%. So to convert from a percentage to a gram is really easy because we just assume that we have 100 grams of this substance. I always have 100% because that's what percentage means. There's always 100%, no more, no less. So if these two numbers add up to 100%, then let's just assume I have 100 grams of this compound. In which case, if I have 43.6%, I have 43.6 grams. And I can do the same thing with oxygen. Oxygen is 56.4%, and I assume that I have 100 grams of this substance. then that's 56.4 grams of oxygen, grams of phosphorus. Okay, so I've gone from percentage to grams. That one's really easy. I just literally changed the unit. So to go from grams to moles, we know how to do this. We use the molar mass. So grams of oxygen in the numerator, grams of oxygen in the denominator. Grams of phosphorus in the numerator, grams of phosphorus in the denominator up here. So we're trying to convert to moles, so grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. Grams of phosphorus to moles of phosphorus. Now, whenever I do a molar mass, I'm always talking about one mole of substance. The only thing that's different is the mass itself, and so for that I look at the table. Phosphorus, 30.974. 30. 0.974. Oxygen, 15.999. Okay, so after I cancel my units, grams of phosphorus cancels grams of phosphorus in the numerator and the denominator. Grams of oxygen in the numerator cancels grams of oxygen in the denominator. So now I've converted from percentage to grams and grams to moles. So let's go ahead and do this calculation. Forty three point six divided by thirty point nine. 74 equals 1 point so I have three sig figs so I should keep three here 1.41 1. moles of P now let's do oxygen here 56.4 divided by 15.999 Three, and I have three sig figs here, so I should keep three sig figs in my answer. 3.53 moles of oxygen. Okay, so right now the formula looks like P1.41 O3.53. And remember, I can't have these. Uh, I can't have uh, fractions in the, in the subscript here of a chemical formula. These have to be whole numbers. So the next step is to divide by the smallest. Divide all these numbers by the smallest number. So 1.41 divided by 1.41. 3.53 divided by 1.41.
So that equals one here and 3.53 divided by 1.41 equals 2.5. So now I'm, I've done a little bit better because I've turned the phosphorus into a whole number, P1, but oxygen is still a fraction. So now it says it's P1 O 2.5. So that's still not quite right. So when I'm in a situation like this and I've divided by the smallest number, but I still don't have whole numbers, then I have to um, multiply these in order to get the smallest whole number ratio. So a 1 to 2.5 ratio, if I multiply this by 2, and I get P2O5. 1 to 2.5 is the same ratio as 2 to 5. I've just doubled it. And when I doubled it, I turned 2.5 into 5.0, a whole number. So this would be the empirical formula for this compound. I finally have whole numbers as subscripts. So the, the whole point of the empirical formula is to find out what is the ratio of atoms, the smallest whole number ratio. So 2 to 5 is the smallest whole number ratio. I can, of course, reduce that and make it 1 to 2.5 like we just saw, but those aren't whole numbers anymore. So this, isn't, this still isn't necessarily the, um, compound, the formula for this compound. The empirical formula with the N on the outside, this is not the molecular formula. I need more information to find out what is the actual formula of this compound. So far, all I have done is figure out what is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in this compound. So we can't solve for n yet, because we don't have enough information. So we'll do that on, an, on another problem coming up. So let's do this one more time. K, 28.7%, 8 1.5%, P, 22.8%, and O, 47.0%. So the first step is to convert these to grams. And remember, all you have to do is change the unit. 28.7 grams. 1.5 grams. 22.8 grams. 47.0 grams. Of oxygen, phosphorus, hydrogen, potassium. So once I have grams, I convert to moles, grams to moles, follow my scheme. So let's look at the periodic table to find these molar masses. Here is K, 39.098, 0 0.098. 0 0.098 grams. Hydrogen, 1.008 grams. Phosphorus, 30.974. And oxygen, 15.999 grams, grams, grams. OK, and this is in one mole of K. This is in one mole of H. This is in one mole of P. And this is in one mole of O. All right, so now we have set these up so that our like units will cancel. Grams and grams will cancel. Grams of K cancels with grams of K. Grams of H cancels with grams of H. Grams of P, grams of O. So now I've converted to moles. So I'm going to do these calculations off screen to speed it up a little bit here. Divided by 39.098. This equals 0 0.734. One point five divided by one point zero zero eight is one point four nine. Twenty two point eight divided by thirty point zero seven four. Oh, that wasn't right. Twenty two point eight divided by thirty point nine seven four. Zero point three seven three six. 47 divided by 15.999, 2.94.
All right, so we divide all of these by the smallest. 0 0.734 is the smallest. 0 0.734, 0 0.734, 0 0.734. So that gives me 1. This looks like 2. 1.49 divided by 0.734. Yeah, 2.02. .02. So I'm going to write that in 2.02. .02. This equals 0.736 divided by 0.734. 1.002. And 2.94 divided by 0.734 equals 4.005. So you can see these aren't exactly whole numbers. It's 1 exactly, and then 2.02, .02, and then 1.002, .02, and then 4.005. So even though these aren't exactly whole numbers, they're pretty darn close. So we can assume that the formula is 1 potassium, 2 H's, 1 phosphorus, and 4 oxygens. So this would appear to be the, or the empirical formula. And remember, the empirical formula is not the molecular formula, because we have to solve for n. We don't have enough information to solve for n on this one yet. Okay, determine the empirical and molecular formula for asbestos. Chrysotile, chrysotile. Determine the empirical and molecular formula for asbestos, which has the following percent composition. Okay, so um, in this one, we're being asked to solve for the empirical and the molecular formula. So to find the empirical formula, remember we just take each atom, magnesium, I have 28.03%. Um, silicon is 21.60%. Hydrogen is 1.16%. And oxygen is 49.21%. So we take the percentages first, convert to grams. And remember, to convert to grams, all we have to do is change the unit here. 28.03 grams of magnesium. 21.60 grams of silicon. 1.16 grams of hydrogen. 49.21 grams of oxygen. Now we convert to moles, dividing by the molar mass. So grams to moles. Grams of silicon to moles. Hydrogen. Grams of hydrogen to moles. Oxygen. Grams of oxygen to moles. So let's look at our periodic table. This tells us the molar mass of these elements. Magnesium, 24.305. Silicon, 28.085. Hydrogen, 1.008. Oxygen, 15.999. And remember, whenever we are calculating masses from the periodic table, or molar masses, or molecular masses, or formula masses, it's always per one mole. One mole, one mole, one mole. OK, so we set these up so that grams on top, grams on bottom. 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 Let's perform these calculations.
3.08. Okay, and then we divide by the smallest. The smallest is 0 0.769. 0 0.769. 0 0.769 divided by 0.769. All right, and then we get 1 here. 1.15 divided by 0 0.769 is 1. 49 1.49 3.08 1 divided by 0.769 4 So remember at this point we're supposed to have whole numbers if we don't have whole numbers then we try to make the fractions disappear by multiplying by the smallest number possible So these are my fractions 1.49 1 1.49 how do I, it's basically 0.5, right? Half. How do I make a half disappear, turn into a whole number? Multiply by 2. So I'll multiply each of these values by 2 so that I can turn them into whole numbers. Okay, this equals 3. 2 times 1 equals 2. This equals 3. 4 times 2 equals 8. So I've, I still have the same ratio, 1.49 to 1 is the same as 3 to 2, but now I have whole numbers. So my formula looks like this, mg3 si2 h3 o8. And remember, this is just the empirical formula. So I always put it in parentheses with an N on the outside because I, this is not the molecular formula. This is empirical. So now I'm asked to calculate the molecular formula. So the piece of information that I need that I did not have in the last problem is this, the molar mass for the molecule. If I know what the molecule weighs or what the formula unit weighs, grams per mole, then I can use this information to determine what this N is. So the way to do that is to calculate the, the formula mass of this compound, the empirical formula that we just calculated. Let's find out what is the formula mass of this. So we have mg times 3 silica times 2, hydrogen times 3, oxygen times 8. Magnesium weighs 24.035. Silicon weighs 28.085. Hydrogen weighs 1.008, and oxygen weighs 15.999. So let's multiply these and add them all up. 24.05 times 3, 72.915, 28.085 times 2, 56.17. Zero two four. Eight times fifteen point nine nine nine. One twenty seven point nine nine two. All right, let's add all these up. Plus three point oh two four. Plus fifty six point one seven. Plus seventy two point nine one five. Equals two sixty point. One zero one. All right, so the N equals the true molar mass
divided by the empirical molar mass. All right, so the true molar mass is 5, 2, 0, point 8 grams per mole. The empirical molar mass is 260.101 grams per mole. So 520.8 divided by 260.101 equals 2.002 n equals 2.002 .002, which should be a whole number so we round to 2 n should always be a whole number so now we know what n is n is 2 so we'll erase n over here we'll add a 2 over here and then we have to distribute so that's the empirical formula and the molecular formula is Mg6, 2 times 3. Silicon is 2 times 2, so Si4. Hydrogen is 3 times 2, H6. And oxygen is 8 times 2, O16. So this would be the molecular formula. And that, um, remember, to calculate a molecular formula, we must be given a molar mass in the problem.